Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the PHNX Rising Post Game Show. We are live at Wild Horse Pass. Uh, it was a, an interesting night, to say the, le uh, to say the least. Uh, Phoenix Rising get their first win in the U.S. Open Cup since 2017 in extra time uh, by the score of 1-0 over Valley United. I do want to introduce my friend uh, Edwin Perez, back from the dead. How are you, sir? I think it's one of the positives. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> dead with no more. But Ramon... <laughs> Again, I hate to be in a somber mood, but it seems like this whole year we've been in a somber mood after a game. Yeah. How can you not be after what is a frustrating performance, as Alex said, a crazy one, as yeah. said. I mean, it's truly disappointing in, in a game that we saw a, a team that they, they beat this team 5-0 in the preseason. Yep. Yeah, they couldn't get it done in the Cup today. Yeah, definitely a lot to talk about. And I want to give everybody a shout-out that's in the comments right now. Tyler, Alex, Racer Dog, Peyton, Pat Moses. <laughs> Uh, he says, oh, the match is still on? Uh, PH, uh, PH uh, Rising Nation, how mad is Owen at Claudio right now? Yeah, a lot of, lot of t stuff to talk about. Owen is making his way up here. There's, he's going to give us his thoughts. But before we do get started, I do want to talk to you about DraftKings. Uh, DraftKings is offering new customers $5 on Dolph's first major, uh, which is the Masters happening this weekend. And new customers can get up to $25 in free bets for every birdie. Bryson DeChambeau sinks in the first round. So if you guys haven't downloaded DraftKings, there's a perfect time to do so. You can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code PHNX, bet $5, and win $25 in free bets for every one of Bryson's birdies in the first round. Join the action for golf's first major with PHNX only, uh, with the code PHNX only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You do have to be 21 and over. Arizona only. Gambling problem, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. All right, Edwin. 1-0. Very frustrating night. You know, I, I was even telling you earlier, I'm like, I'm about to go on a Ramon rant because I'm honestly really tired of this. I'm really tired of this team not giving 100% on the field and getting into situations like the one that they got in tonight. Like you said earlier, they beat Valley United in the prison 5-0, no sweat. They were ready. They had come off a great win over there in San Antonio. And they come over here on Wednesday in the middle of the night. Here comes Owen. And they, they throw up a stinker. So I need to I need to know what Owen has to say in a little bit. But I'm definitely frustrated. I can see that in the comments as well. Uh, but, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Edwin, what happened tonight, man? What's going on? There's a lot to dissect with this game. There's, yeah. there's a lot of issues that I think it's hard to pinpoint just one right off the bat. Yeah. Here's what Rick will say. I know Owen's got, got all the juice in there, but, I mean, it just seems passing wasn't there tonight. Creativity and the attack wasn't there. Yeah. The defense wasn't bad. I think it, it's one of the better performances from the defense. Yeah, yeah. But it's still not there. So, as a whole, the team hasn't played – a, a good 90, and we're still waiting on that. It seems like they've played a good 45 in one game against Monterey Bay, a yeah. good 20 minutes against San Antonio. They still haven't put up a good, four, like, good 60 to 90 minutes of a game yet. Yeah, and we're still waiting for that to happen. A good, exactly. a good crowd game. I don't think we've had that quite yet. Yeah, no, and I know the the win in San Antonio was a big boost for morale. They were somber over that loss against San Diego. They got the win in San Antonio. Out, you know, just to say, uh, San Antonio was riddled by injuries. They were playing a lot of academy players, but nonetheless, they did get the result. So I was looking for that momentum to carry over, over, over here. Now they did make a lot of changes to the starting lineup. Might have that might have you know kind of messed up a little things uh, in the field. But at the end of the day, man, it's Valley United. Rising should have gotten the the result, no problem. But here's the thing: if you look around the USL and the US Open Cup, a lot of USL teams lost today. So should we commend Rising for this, you know, uh, win, or should we dig in a little bit more because we know they can play better? Well, I think I'm gonna answer that a bit. I, I want to give a chance for our boy Owen to hop on. So before do we it. do that, yeah, we gotta do our classic draft king, king of the game, and uh, we gotta give a shout out to the fans. To the I fans, mean, there baby. Was a, there was a, not a lot of bright spots in the players, but I mean, come on, the fans still showed up. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's not the best of tennis. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to fluff it up like it was, but the South End, they were chanting. Throughout that extra time, I mean, there was times where it slowed down a little bit, but it was hard because Rising didn't give them much to chant about. So, you got to give yeah. a shout out to JoJo. We, we put the crown on you today in the South End. Thanks for continuing that support, even when it was hard in this game, when there were times when Rising didn't give anything to, to cheer about, to be honest. Definitely. Shout out to every fan that was here. I know it's a Wednesday night, it's a school night, but they were out here chanting and the rest of the crowd as well. So, thank you so much for showing up. It was a great time to have you here. Okay, Owen. 
what what happened down there? Let us know about that post game conference. So the first comments, and I I heard you know I heard bits of that talk then from you guys coming up here. The first comments that Rick had after that game, literally the first thing out of his mouth. Everything we did right against San Antonio, we did wrong tonight. Mm. And I think he's right on that. Let's be real. It it was all of the frustration we've seen so far about getting the ball into the final third and not really doing anything with it. Yeah. And it was just like that, just exacerbated by the fact that you're playing a, a Nisa team today. Okay? This is a team, before the game, people were talking like, you know, I was having a chat with uh, one of the people behind the club social media accounts who was claiming it was going to be 6-0. <laughs> wow. Wow. Bold prediction for a game that was decided in the 115th minute. Um, uh, look, bold. At the end of the day, and this is the thing, right? It's it's cup football. It's survive in advance. They've gotten through. They're into the third round. They're in the hat for that now. I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about the third round later. Yeah. But but it wasn't the most impressive of performances. And a lot of that, especially when it was going into extra time, I think there were quite a few of us looking at each other and just saying, this game's going to go the distance. This is going to go to kicks from the mark. Yeah. And when you hit that point, that's anyone's game, right? Yeah, that's you know, Valley United about, yeah. are the underdog, but no one's an underdog really in kicks from the mark. Yeah. The, the underdog's the person who loses the coin toss and has to kick second. That's true. That's the underdog. Yeah, no. And that's what I was worried about because as soon as, you know, uh, say he has had uh, that, he hit the post near the end of the 90 minutes. And I was like, you know what? If that would have gone in, I think everybody would have gone to go home with a better feeling. But because of the extra time and then having to claw their way back, Fortunately, got that repetitive goal. But like you're saying, if they went to penalties, we've already seen Rising in this competition lose in penalties. Multiple times. And so Multiple times we've seen them lose on penalties, right? In fact, the last two seasons they played in this competition, they lost on penalties. Sporting Arizona in 2018, mm -hmm. New Mexico United in 2019. This is the first Open Cup win that Rising has had since 2017. When they knocked out Fresno Fuego of the yeah. PDL at that time. Um team that became Fresno FC and then they died, went to Monterey and now they got Central Valley Fuego, right? Who knocked off El Paso. Um, there you go. But yeah, Fresno Fuego in 2017 yeah. and then went on to lose to San Francisco Deltas. Um, I mean, in that Not sense... Not a lot of luck. Not no, a lot of luck. No. Yeah. Um, and look, if this team ends up playing an MLS team in the next round, which it could, there is, in general, we don't know, unfortunately, because there are lots of permutations. Again, I'm sure we'll go into this later, but in, in the broad, there's a better than 50% chance. It'll be the first time they've done so since 2014 when they were playing as Arizona United mm. and faced LA Galaxy. Actually took the lead in that game before losing 2-1. Wow. Yeah, big, big day today for the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, FC Tucson beat uh, Las Vegas Lights tonight. Should, should we look at the scores? Then? Yeah, you can, the scores yeah let's, let's take a look at All the right, scores. Let's take a look at the scores. Monterey to... fell. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it's Colorado fell. The switchbacks, they fell so as well. So scores around there today. FC Motown winning against Syracuse Pulse. Syracuse Pulse of Nisa. FC Motown, uh, an amateur team. Uh, the RGV Toros going away. They beat North Carolina, uh, North Carolina League One team, obviously. Miami FC got the job done against Miami United. They won 3-0. Uh, Pioneers is all that's showing up for me here, but they, they lost 1-0 to Flower City Union mm. of Nisa, Rochester-based team from Nisa. Louisville, late goal, wasn't it, to beat Chattanooga Red Wolves. They take it 1-0. Evergreen losing to Richmond. Ki well, it's not Evergreen, was it? Aren't they Nova now? Northern Virginia. No, All of these teams, these amateur teams keep changing their names. Right? I, lo I love Google the names. Can't keep I love up. the names. I think it's way. Nova, Northern Virginia. Yeah. And they lost 1 0 to Richmond Kickers. Forward Madison beating AFC Cleveland 3 0. Colorado Springs switchbacks, despite having a man advantage since the 27th minute, they fall 1 0 after extra time to the Northern Colorado Hailstorm. Big win for them. Yeah. Bay Cities of Nisa knocking off USL Championship Monterey Bay 2 1. Albion San Diego, they would level for so long. 89th minute, San Diego Loyal get the winner. 2-1 to San Diego Loyal. They move on. Yeah. Obviously, the result here. And then the other one, the big one, if you're following and possibly thinking about who Rising could draw, FC Tucson down at Kino North Stadium. 3-2 of a USL Championship Las Vegas Lights. Now, on that note, let's talk about the draw. For those of you yeah. who are wondering when are we going to know what's going to happen 9 a.m friday morning phoenix times noon eastern 9 a.m friday morning 
US Soccer's YouTube and on their Twitter. They're going to have the live draw for the third round of the US Open Cup. The way it will work, teams will be split into groups of four or six. We don't know quite which yet, based on geography. So it's likely that FC Tucson will be in the same pot as Phoenix Rising. Okay. There will be at least one MLS team in each pot. We know that. Okay. Every MLS team must be drawn against a non-MLS team. There are 17 mm. MLS teams entering in the third round. They are the 17 worst teams in MLS from last season. Okay. They will be joined by 31 teams advancing from the second round, of which rising are one of those teams now that have booked their spot. So 17 MLS teams must be paid up against 17. USL, yeah. Lower, lower and when division. When you work it all out, yeah. you know, it's... It's looking like it. It's over 50% chance. We don't know. Look, we'll have more on that, I'm sure, on Friday. We'll have reaction to the draw. Because, uh, of course, we're on live on Friday evening this week. Uh, weird schedule, but, hey, it's what we're doing. Um, so I'm looking at the standings here on the Western Conference for MLS. So if, if Rising were to be drawn uh, close to last season, by the from way. From last season, yeah, yeah. 2021. So last team, uh, worst team in the Western Conference, Houston, Austin, Dallas, San Jose, LAFC, and L.A., uh, they did not make the playoffs. So, so I can get the full list up if you want and the teams go. entering. Let's there get this. Let's get this here. Um, Imagine a Chicharito match. But yeah, let's I'm, see. I'm let, me ask, let me ask the chat really quick. The let's, let's have a look. <laughs> teams entering in the third round. Atlanta United, Austin FC, Charlotte FC, Chicago Fire, Columbus Crew, DC United, FC Cincinnati, FC Dallas, Houston Dynamo, into Miami, LAFC, LA Galaxy, Ooh. Minnesota United, New York Red Bulls, Orlando City, RSL, and San Jose Earthquakes. RSL's an everything. You may end up in their group. Yeah, yeah. So RSL, I want I want the the LA teams. I want Los Angeles. After tonight, maybe give who give us you, Tucson first, and then we'll... LAFC or LA Galaxy, because we see Galaxy all the time with their reserve team. Like we're seeing yeah. them this weekend. Yeah. Surely it's LAFC. I I think I want LAFC. Yeah. Here or there. I want it here. Oh, I know Carlos here, Vela yeah. won't come, but we'll, maybe he will be in the bench. But I don't know. I don't think I don't know how much how seriously LAFC will will consider this competition. But it's it's crazy. You know, I don't know. After tonight, it makes me question: Should we really want an MLS team in the next round after what we saw on the field tonight? <laughs> you think Rising? Would you rather play? lose to LAFC or FC Tucson? That's the thing. I'd rather squeak by FC Tucson. <laughs> like no, with that's this not an it. option. If you're going to go down that route and say, "Look, they're playing poorly," and they did, they played poorly today. Okay. They still pulled off a result, but they did play poorly. Um, the final third was was dire. Surely you'd rather lose to a team in the league above, where you can say, "Oh, we were supposed to lose, right?" Yeah. Do you want to go to FC Tucson and get beaten by them? You know, I mean, I, technically, the LAFC reserves already beat Rising, so ouch, I'm just ouch. saying it's ouch. it's kind of like ouch. a toss. So well, I don't know, man. Like, here, and this is what I was trying to say LAFC earlier. LAFC playing in their outground at Cashman Field, maybe. <laughs> no, um, I don't. No, no Vegas, no Vegas. Yeah, we're already Vegas. Ready. No more, hey, no more Vegas. This game we were all talking about. If Rising get through, it would be just everyone's luck. That for a fourth time this season we will be seeing Las Vegas I lights. See it. They're I gone. See it. They're gone. They're done. <laughs> yeah, they're done. No lights. We'll no see, lights. Won't see Danny Trejo out. again. Yeah, race the for dog. Are uh, are predicting rising seven LFC one. I love it. It's Let's probably do it. it's probably what the guy that it, you yeah. talked to would have predicted if we get <laughs> LFC. So I'm not sure he's quite that daft. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, and again, uh, I'll I'll say it again. I'm disappointed on this in this team. Well, yeah, I was going to say, before we talk about the hypotheticals of yeah. the draw and all that, I think we got to focus on tonight's matchup and what needs to be fixed before you face one of those teams, you know, before yeah. you face an FC Tucson, before you, you face an MLS team. It was just disappointing for me in the sense that, and one of the comments said it earlier, yeah. Santi and Epps still didn't have a great game. Obviously, Santi went out with the injury. Obviously, mm -hmm. that, that'll be a question I put on to you after I... I, I put uh, I say this point, but for me the most threatening person tonight was Mano Madrid, and that that's a defender. And I know I, I hate to say he it, he is but, an aerial threat though. To be fair, up yeah, in that box, yeah. yeah. But it's just yeah. an issue for me that one of the most threatening guys and the guy who created the goal was Madrid off of a header who kind of headed into the box for Repetto to to on the goal. Ball. I haven't been able to watch it back yet, but someone in my Twitter mentions is saying deliberate play or deflection. 
Was there a hint of offside in that goal? We're going to have to watch it back later. But from, from the cross or on I the goal? I don't know. I don't. It's I, just someone in my Twitter mentions. I don't know. Yeah. Again, I mean, we're I right. We were on it, the side but... where the goal happened. I saw Arturo ping the ball inside. King was the one that put it back in play. And Artur, uh, Rapetto was able to knock it home. Oh, King so. was King did, so King was one of the people we were speaking to after the game. He didn't like it. We didn't ask him questions about his assists. You okay. know? It's okay. Danel got an assist tonight. There we go. Let's put it out there. <laughs> there we go. Danel King got an assist. As he yeah. rightfully pointed out, it's a rare occurrence. Yeah. Uh, first half, lifeless. We were over there down there on the field, Owen. I saw a lot of fight from uh, Richmond Antwi. I liked him on, uh, up front, at least for this game. He was running at defenders. He was looking to create that pressure every time. But was he creating enough? He wasn't because he wasn't getting the ball. I don't, I don't think. But was he getting himself into positions to win the ball? That's true. Yeah. You, know, that's you can run th- around all you like. But yeah. You've got to actually put yourself in a position where you're going to win that. You know, get given the ball. I and think be as able a striker, there's only so much you could do if you're not getting the ball either. You know, because he can try to get involved. But if the midfield doesn't connect with him or Santi doesn't ping him the ball, then it's, there's only so much I feel he could do. But how many times were there where you were looking at it and saying, Give him the ball. Yeah. In that spot that he was in, how many times were you? Because, yeah. again, it, it's one thing to be running at defenders and all that, but you've got to do it with purpose. Um, and, I mean, it's tough, right? To be fair, he's not been playing games. Yeah. Okay? He came off briefly, came on briefly against San Antonio. Mm-hmm. So it's understandable. And I don't think it's his be... fault. Yeah. And I think and you, when you were talking about it, that Rising were, were moving the ball around side to side, but once they got to the attack in third. They were stalling. Yeah, they, they didn't know what to do. And that's what I mean. When you're playing with your back to the goal and you're looking to get the ball here, you're not able to turn or you need to connect with that midfield in order to open those spaces. And so if Epps is not doing this thing, which I thought, again, he had another disappointing outing, and unfortunately Santi Moore went out injured, it just makes it really tough for the whoever the striker is, whether it's Hurst, whether it's Repetto, Antwi, it's really tough on them to be able to create something if they're not getting – the you know the, the help from the other uh, players right and that was part of the problem it felt like a lot of the game they were kind of passing around the edge of the box it was very at urgency there was a lot of almost trying to pass it into the net right yeah. Yeah. and that doesn't work you've got to either try and play the right ball in and find someone or you've got to start taking shots yeah and they weren't doing either yeah and that was why it was such a struggle watching some of that first half especially because it just felt like it was a lot of possession, but it was meaningless possession. Yeah. It was just having it in the final third. And look, when you've got an organized team, Valley United knew their assignment. They understood the assignment coming in today, right? Yeah. It was disrupt. It was try and just stay back, keep your shape, be compact, for straight rising. Hopefully, you can catch them on a the counter. If yeah. you don't, at least if you can extend the game. You can push it into extra time. You can push it into penalties. Yeah. You're really looking for that error or, or just any. And again, as we said, you get it to kicks in the mark. That's just the ultimate equalizer at that point. You know, mm. no one's a favorite at that stage. Yeah, that's that's a coin toss in, in anyone's direction. Yeah, I, I know there's yeah. skill involved. There's all of that, but it's it's. But anyway, onto the Santi point. I think we should address that. Yeah, we what's going on with him? So he went off. He had a bit of a, an ankle sprain, is what Rick told us. They're still waiting to evaluate it. The hope is that it won't be too much of a problem. However, again, he went off, looked in quite a bit of pain when he was going off, had some ice on there. Rick's told us ankle sprain. Okay. Uh, not, they didn't really say it was like it looked serious or not. They were just going to take it day to day. Well, we don't. That's the problem is it's early doors. You know, I'm yeah. sure they're going to want to evaluate, see after, after a little while what it's looking like. But yeah. We'll see. Uh, one of the bright spots I felt during the first half was the amount of corner kicks that they were able to get. I think that's when Rising looked more dangerous on the ball, when they were lofting the ball and they were using their size advantage. You saw Manuel Madrid. He almost got one in. Uh, Joe Farrell, uh, you know, coming in the box as well. So did you feel like, you know, there, there were more the more dangerous team during those corner kicks? See, I'll take it a different way than you okay. on that. Don't get me wrong. I think from the corner kicks, they had some danger, yes. Mm-hmm. But... The reason they were getting those corner kicks is because they couldn't beat the first man trying to get the ball into the box. Yes. Yeah, okay? So, winning the corner, great. But there were times, especially once, and it went out on Santi's wing. The fullback slips, and you think, okay, a good winger now. And he is a good winger. Santi's a very good winger, a very good USL Championship winger, up against a Nisa fullback. He should be off to the races at that point, right? Yeah. You know, the guy's slipped. He's, he's dead and buried at that point, right? Mm-hmm. And yet he recovers and blocks the cross. Yeah. And that shouldn't have been happening. And yet we've we've seen that, you know, time and time again. They, they weren't quite getting the balls in. So 
look, were they dangerous on those corners? Yes, I think they were. Um, and it was, again, as you're saying, Manuel Madrid was one of the more dangerous players the out one, there. Yeah. Was, yeah. it, that's because he's decent in the air up top. You know, you put him in there and he can he can cause some danger. But I don't think that the way they were winning those corners was necessarily... It wasn't like there were a load of saves or a load of late blocks in the area kind of thing. Yeah. Quite a few of them were because they couldn't get the cross in. Mm -hmm. And that's... You know, they should be beating that first man. Uh, the back line, I felt, uh, played really well. Uh, the one kind of sore spot for me in the middle was Anguiano. I don't, I don't think the game kind of came to him, looked a little outmatched physically, and of well, course he's a little bit smaller in size. This the thing, right? And it's why we might say, okay, you want to swap people out, you want to see different... I mean, John Levin was was sitting over there on the in the stands. You know, he didn't play today. He wasn't yeah. in the 18. Anguiano, good player, good technical player. But you're up against the lower league team. And what happens when you play lower league teams in the cup? What kind of game do you get? Physical game. Physical game. Yep. Is that the kind of game that a small guy like Carlos Anguiano is going to perform? Yeah. No. You know, and that's not a slight on him at all. It's not his kind of No, he was of great game. on the ball. He just wasn't He's creative enough. Ball, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's still hard when you know that you're going to have a team, that, uh, especially when they see, like, Carlos again. He, he's a pretty short guy in the midfield. Yeah. They're going to try and bully him. Yeah. And how does he respond? You know, it's it's hard. Yeah. No, I think once Anguiano came out and Seijas was able to come in, I think the gears kind of shifted a little bit or rising. And I think that's what we've been seeing. We saw that in San Antonio. He was able to, you know, hit that mid-range shot that turned into the bounce that Repetto was able to get. And he did the same thing tonight where he was the one, you know what, I'm just going to take the shot. I'm just going to push the ball forward. Instead of looking to – for the right pass, he's always doing what he thinks is best to, to put the team in his back, basically. I felt he was a creative force tonight. He's a very experienced player, right? Let's not forget that. This is a guy who I believe he's in his late 30s. He's played in European continental competitions, right? I believe mm. he, he made it into the knockout stages of the Europa League with, uh, is it Bruges? Mm. It was, he was in Belgium. Yeah. Um, so he has He's got a lot of experience playing in the... Libertadores and the Copa Sudamericana. You know, yeah. this is a this is a guy who's got a lot of experience playing at high high levels of games. Loads of caps for Venezuela as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a very good player. And when you've got that kind of experience, you know, he's been in these kind of games before. Mm -hmm. this, this is nothing new for a, a guy like Luis. So, you know, he, he's not only got the physical abilities. Even if you can't expect him to go ninety minutes every game, that's not you know at his age, you're not going to get that. But he's got the brain. He's got the, the smarts to know how you deal with some of this. And <laughs> you really want him in there. In a, in a time like that, when the boys maybe need a bit of direction, they need someone to kind of take over, mm -hmm. to say, look, this is where we're going wrong. This is yeah. how we're going to break them down. Is all you could ask for, really. Yeah, I love the fact that whenever there's a, a, you know, a, a ball that goes out of bounds or there's a, you know, a little bit of a gap in play, He's always talking to people. He's saying, hey, I need you here. Hey, I need the ball over here. And you can see it from the press box. You can see it when you're down there. That he's that leader, you know, in the in the, in the the midfield. And I'm not saying, like, Quinn isn't the leader because tonight he was the captain. But Saijas just saying, like, he was kind of dictating play a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now, am I worried that Saijas is the one having to do that when Rodriguez is in the game? I know he's getting double team, triple team. It's tough, man. It's tough being him because I know, I know it's team scout and they're saying, you know what, Rodriguez is the guy that we need to stop. So, what are your feelings about that? Look, if Rising, you know, are going to rely on Arturo Rodriguez, they, it's a tough one, right? Because A, he's still young, right? And B, everyone knows that he's a very good player with a lot of creative players. As you said, they're double teaming him. They're triple teaming him, right? Mm -hmm. And... One of the things that I think we've seen Arturo do a couple of times these last two games, and it's obviously something that R Rick has pointed out in the past, you know, has been a problem he's had, is he hangs on to the ball too long. Mm -hmm. There are times where Arturo will beat one or two players, and you go, great, look, he's left them for dead. Phenomenal. Yep. Look at the skill on him. And then he tries to take on a third and a fourth, and you can't beat them all. You've got to play the easy ball. You've got to lay it off, or you've got to yeah. shoot, or something, because you can't take on three or four guys. Yeah. There is no, like, you know, it's not, no offense, he's not Lionel Messi. Like, it's. <laughs> no, and we saw it in the second half. He's over here on our end where the press box is, 
and Edwin, you were seeing it with me. He took one guy, he took two guys, he took three guys. He's in the box. He sees the fourth guy coming. Hurst is open. Instead of playing maybe a one-two with him, trying to get, you know, a little bit deeper in the box, he chooses to try to get, you know, around the fourth guy. And like you're saying, when you do that as well, when you hold the ball a little bit too long, that's when the, the player just kind of stutters and it dies and, you know, you got to figure out another way. And the, the problem, Al, uh, the other problem I point out with, with Arturo, right, is that you can see in Arturo sometimes the frustration um, and it comes out at referees. It comes out just in general play, right? Yeah. He needs a bit of help, I think. You know, he needs, we know that he's really close to Luis and I think it's something that maybe they need to work on. It's just, Yes, he's frustrated. If he can channel that into his play, that's great, right? We want to see that. We want to see that hunger and that desire out of him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you wonder with a young player, especially one who's very creative, if you get frustrated and frustrated and frustrated in the way that he can do, do you create a situation where, you know, he's not quite as in the game as you want him to be? Mm -hmm. You know? You mean by, like, the letting the game come to him instead of forcing things? Is that what you're referring it, to? It's more that... Sometimes you just feel like you might get a little bit up in his own head, okay. you know, and especially when you're a creative player, you've got to be pretty clear. Um, I I don't know. Um, I'm getting some texts in now, by the way. Uh, let's see, let's like see. To shout out to my dad on this one. He looks offside when he scores. Um, <laughs> we'll have to watch it back. We're going to have to watch it back. Again, right? The first thing I had in my mentions was deliberate play or deflection. So by that, you would imagine it's come off Valley United player in there. Yeah. But is it I mean, when, when they score, they all they were all looking at the lineman. Uh, so line one's line's yeah. woman, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Over, um, yeah. But look, the, the question really more than more than anything is: is it a deliberate play? So if the defender plays that ball deliberately, even if they didn't intend for it to go where it went, mm -hmm. okay. So if you stick a light, well, maybe not. It gets complicated even when you're on the goal line because then you have a deliberate save, doesn't? Have a, and again, I'm saying this having watched it in real time. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it yeah, again. Have to watch so it back, I don't yeah. know. We're going to have to watch it back. But a deliberate play resets offside. Yeah. Doesn't matter what position he's in. If it's only a deflection, no. Yeah. It doesn't. Okay. So we're going to have to watch it back. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Val United did, you know, go down 10 men in the 80, 81st minute from what I saw. I thought that's Seven when Rising yellow. was going to be able to. to to go on top after that. Uh, Tay has hit the post a little bit later on. I think when Rising maybe should have just went to the back line of three like they did an extra time and just pushed everyone forward. So what uh, Rick said, one of the things they were mainly looking to do when that red card happened, you know, up mm -hmm. until then, they were looking to try to keep the fullbacks back, stop them from overcommitting. Okay. Um, when the red card happened, Rick said he felt that he could free the fullbacks a bit more. That he could try and get them to push up, to stretch them out more at the back. Mm -hmm. Because I think he was looking at it as they got less players, you've got to stretch them more, you know. it. Even beyond that, you'd hope that they're a bit less of a threat. But yeah. look, from what, I, from what I've seen, I don't really have any questions over the red card. I think it was entirely justified. Um, his earlier chance where he got a yellow was a little bit more orange in nature, let's say. Mm. Um, so... You know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Valley United did have a chance. I think it was number 22 from their team that I think if it would have dropped down a little bit lower, and this is in the second half when it, he did a, a long-range shot, mm -hmm. I don't think Lalo could have gone to that. And that kind of gave me a little bit of a gasp on, on my end over here. Uh, and I don't know if you remember, Edwin, that uh, the, the Valley United player hit that, you know, that shot. That's, that's what I was worried about, or those two – you know, crosses that were came in. You can even hear the crowd gasping because they knew if Rising went down, this was, it would have been a lot of trouble probably at the end of the game right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to say, because I have actually seen uh, a video, and I'd like to this. thank uh, Mr. Jake Anderson for this one because he's <laughs> tweeted it. But look. Jake it, Anderson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The man who's, it, who's that, currently, just to be clear, he's just Literally, over there in right the press Right there, box, he's just so waving at made a rare appearance. Um, <laughs> I'm struggling to buy that it's a deliberate play. I'm struggling very much to buy that it was a deliberate play because that it's pretty much blasted at this guy's head, right? It, it's yeah. if he's offside when that header comes in from Darnell. To me, he's 
probably offside there. So is it, was it a foot or was it his whole body? It's on his head. You're, you're, well, I don't know. I'll see if I can I, watch it. On wait, sorry, guys, we're what? just kind of watching this. What well, should we bring on Jake? People oh. want to see Jake just to see his reaction to the goal. Can we get Jake in here just Jake, to see what he has Jake, to say? Come on for a little bit. You, he does a lot. This. Does he's a lot of tweeting. I'm clear. We're welcoming he special guest in. Come on. Just, just, just talk about yeah, we'll, we'll give you the mic over here. We, you tweeted about the goal. Yeah, you showed stand it. Stand over a bit in. more so we can see you. There we go. The, the man himself. He's right in the way. Yeah. The light now. So from the So uh, just you, you tweeted about the goal. You, what you saw. What's your reaction? Is it offside? The angle I, I haven't seen a, a good replay, and we're never going to see those replays. The angle I have of it, it just seemed like a ping pong ball in the box, and and Roberto was there to just poke it home. I mean, it, it's just one of those. I mean, Rising lost the final in 2018 off a goal just like that. And while we got got you on here real quick before we let you go, what's your, just your quick thoughts on just what we saw tonight? That was not a performance I don't think any of us expected. It was not a good performance, especially against a team like Valley United. I, I hate to say bad things about them, but that's a, that's a Nisa side. Like, this is Phoenix Rising, and that game should have ended in 90 minutes for sure. The fact that they advanced to the third round for the first time in a few years is still a plus, but they're going to have to be much, much better if they expect to advance past whoever they end up playing in the third round, let alone the rest of this USL season. You know what we got to say, though? It did its work. The tie. Tie man with a tie. Jake Anderson. <laughs> Jake. I was, hey, I, if they didn't, I was going to say that you're going to have to do a ceremonial pant rip. <laughs> they still haven't won in 90 minutes. They did at home, San Anto- wow. at home wow. since the pant rip. I'm, I'm just throwing it out. There. I was, I was in San Antonio. I didn't rip anything there. But Claudio, Claudio ripped his shorts today. Ooh, and then he scored. There so there's go. something in there. There's something. He did there. rip his shorts. There's something ripping your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Well, thank you. Thank you for hopping on, Jake. Sorry we had to bother you a little bit, but no, we, we I, had to bring I appreciate the it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, of course. Come on. Thank you, sir. That was Jake Anderson, everybody. Woo! Wish we had a little clap effect. All right. Oh, I'm not man. clapping. I'm sorry, Jake. I'm <laughs> not, not clapping. clapping Jake. Thanks again, Jake, for hopping on. All right, y'all. Before we transition into uh, the last part of our show, we do want to tell you about one of our new partners that we have for PHNX. We are excited to welcome OG's Brands as part of the PHNX family. I know. Have you guys dug into those a little bit yet? Not yet. We haven't been no. in the office, so we, we haven't yeah, gotten a we chance to try them. We haven't been in the office recently, you know? <laughs> So OG's is one of Arizona's first original scratch mates, cannabis kitchens, and is dedicated to creating in- innovative and memorable cannabis infused products uh, that flavor life's journeys. The quality of their life's products stem from the combination of accurate dosing and amazing flavor. Edibles are not a one size fits all product, which is why OG's is proud to offer a wide range of products for all demographics and preferences. Their motto is fl- flavoring life, and that's something we can all get behind. And I know I'll need some OGs if Rising keep playing like that. So. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. I'm sure that like, watching Rising's attack would be substantially better if you were high. Yeah. I uh, yeah. need a high doses for that. But, yeah, uh, again, uh, OGs, uh, happy to have them as part of the PHNX family. So if you guys haven't checked them out, we'll go ahead and tweet it out so you guys can get a little just, bit more familiar with that. Just as excited as Justin is in the comments. Well, let's he's, see what Justin's saying over here. Off. Shout out to all those commenting, Tyler. Yeah, Justin. thank you. I've lost track of the comments. Yeah. What's Justin saying? Can we read them out, please? Yeah, I know Tyler's trying oh, to give geez. us a donation here, but we, oh, our we, stuff we, is not we, going. We, we. <laughs> Justin's he's got excited. next. Scott. Justin, I'm, next time I'm just going to read that. So, <laughs> that, I mean, that's all you need. That's dude. all you need, babe. So yeah. shout out to all those commenting, Scott. We saw your comments. Don't worry. Quote, a lot of comments. Rumor has it that if we if we can get enough super chats in, that Ramon might do the next game after the end of a bag. If it's a road game and I'm not here at the stadium, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> but, He'll do it. But we'll have a He'll hard do time. It. See, he's just committed. We're going to need Jake Anderson him. to come We've in. Got and him. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if, get, if we get enough super chats, yeah. Yeah. It's sorry, Tyler. I know Tyler's having a situation with the I know. super chats. We don't. I, at least I don't get paid enough to understand what's going oh on there. God. But we'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely. He's check trying. It out and make Thank sure you, Tyler, Justin, time. everybody that's watching us right now. We appreciate you. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, let's wrap it up here. It's it's late. A wild horse pass. It's windy as well. Yeah, the I, li- our lighting setup here. One of the lights here keeps like slightly flickering. I'm just like, like, am I gonna have to jump before it hops over the fence? Multiple chairs, like falls down there. Yeah. Jacob, please. You know, this is <laughs> not our fault. We not need some fault. sandbags or something. <laughs> Hold them down. Shout out to Jacob. All right, y'all. Uh, Owen, we'll start with you. Last thoughts on tonight's game, and uh, what can we expect moving forward? On to Friday. 
That's Open true. Cup draw, 9 a.m., the third round draw Ooh. of the U.S. Open Cup, and we'll be on that night. Exactly. So we'll be reacting to that, I'm sure. We'll be talking about it for sure. Might Mr. Try Edwin. Get some special guests as well to Ooh. react. We'll Ooh, see. Okay. We'll see what we can do. We'll see, see what we can pull. Pos positives, they won. They moved on to the next round. We're yeah. going to see them in another round. But another positive, we got to see the bench. We got to see some depth, and, and you got to see some players that can really yeah. get minutes off the bench. But, I mean, just the overall – Headline, I think all the comments are saying is it needs to be better, right? Yeah. It, it just the whole season's theme, I think it has to be better. And I think it's not specifically one player, it's it's an overall group thing. There's things to be fixed. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to struggle against like this and you're going to get paired off with the MLS team, yeah, I mean, you're not liking your odds, so you gotta gotta fix situations. But like Owen says, your 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 next game Saturday, Los Dos, you're focused on that, you're focused on the draw, and then. We'll see, we'll see where it takes us. And without wanting to dwell on those negatives again, it's almost like a crisis of identity. This club, this club demolishes people on the attack. It's vulnerable at the back sometimes, but they demolish people on the attack. And when they're struggling with that, it's like, you know, what, what is Phoenix Rising? Yeah. If not a team that comes and scores four. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're all just waiting because we know it's there. Hey, we know third it's round, there. third round of the cup. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't get easier. You know, than this, it's going to be tougher in the next round. We'll see what happens on Friday. It doesn't get uh, easier than this. Yeah, so. <laughs> Motivational uh, words. Thank you, Ramon. Always. Uh, 150 half minute class win, 1 0. <laughs> doesn't get easier than this. We'll see. We know this team can do better. And that's why we're talking about this right now, because we know this team can be a lot better than what they're showing on the field. So, again, we're going to be back in studio on Friday, 6 p.m. I know this week's a little bit funky with the open uh, cup game uh, tonight. But, yeah, we'll be back in studio at 6 p.m. on Friday. Saturday, we'll be back here at Wild Horse Pass for the game against Los Dos. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll be having another live post game after that. Anything else, guys? Shout out to JoJo, the Trap King, King of the Game. Jojo. Shout out to Jake for his first appearance. Look at that. Future Next Rising show. But other than that, <laughs> we'll, see you. we'll see you Friday and Saturday. Back, back to, back. to back days. Back right. to back. Back to back. All right, y'all. That's Thanks it from us. Busy. We'll see you next time. Take care.